welcome back to the channel. Yeah, it's cold in here. The noisy here is the torpedo heater. Right here, I'm trying to get things warmed up in here a little bit. Today, what I gotta do is I got to inspect this particular piece of equipment right here, which is the draw bar. It goes between the locomotive and the tender, which is sitting outside. Every year, we are required to die pin this and make sure it is not cracked or compromised in any way. As you can see, it's got a little bit of rubbing, chafing going on right here. I gotta get a grinder and clean up these edges before they crack and then clean it up die pen it, make sure it's not compromised, clean the pins up, die pen them, make sure they're not compromised, and then the whole kit and caboodle can go back in the locomotive, and uh, we can put the tender back on it. Those of you that are just joining in, we are starting the annual on our steam locomotive, which is a pretty, some people say it's not, some people say it is. I think it's a pretty in-depth process. And I do things probably a little more anally than a lot of folk. The annual on this, uh, the FRA is coming in about two weeks, so I plan on using that entire two weeks to go through this locomotive and make sure that it is safe and suitable to be on train service this year. I got the draw bar all done, uh, no cracks. You see me go around the grinder and a flapper wheel. I was taking down any of the burrs that found their way up. When burrs uh, appear, you can get cracks not too terribly long behind. So I cleaned all the burrs up, cleaned off all the high spots. And this thing passes inspection, so it's ready to go back into the locomotive. Now, I gotta do the pins. And I got the pins set up over here in a rather erect nature. So that what I'm gonna do is come around, clean them off, and then throw the penetrating on it. Do it, be done, yada 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 yada. I'll do this one really fast for y'all. As you can see, there is no cracks. There's a lot of, a lot of gnarling going on, but no cracks good what we're going to be doing is i got to go through this locomotive and inspect all the valves i got to inspect all these valves all the shutoff valves up there <clears throat> open up the injectors inspect them a little bit and what i'm doing is i'm looking at the valve seats to make sure that the valve seats are in real good shape the last time we ran this locomotive we were starting to have problems with these Notice the orange handled and the blue handled valves there. <clears throat> Their seats were starting to come apart. So I'm going to be inspecting those today and lapping them and making sure that they're ready to go. Because we haven't looked at this engine for about three years now. But I got to pop this open. That's our boiler check. I got to lap the check, the valve, and then I got to take this valve here apart, which is the check valve, shut off valve, and lap and inspect it. There's one on this side and one on the other side. Beep. people. Yep, we're gonna need a lump them. There it goes. Yeah, we over up. See just what the heck it looks like down inside. We have photographic evidence of this being worked on right before we shut down, so it shouldn't be in that bad shape. Really good shape. Okay, so show you how this works. This right here is your your valve. It's got this seat on it. When this valve goes down inside of here, the boiler pressure actually keeps the valve shut. The boiler pressure can't go back back feeding that way into the injector. So when the injector gets turned on, it's actually putting the water in at a higher pressure than what's inside the boiler. So the important part is, is that we have to make sure that these surfaces are happy, that way they seal correctly. And they don't look bad, but I'm just gonna throw a quick lapping on them to make sure that they are happy in the future. 
This is what we use the lap with. We dip in, put a little bit of this here. Now I know there's gonna be a bunch of armchair experts that are gonna get on here and comment all about how I'm doing it wrong and how I should start off with the coarser grit and work my way up. I'm in agreement with you. If it was really bad shape, that is the way I would start. But these things were lapped right before the locomotive was put into long-term storage. So I really don't need to go getting wild and crazy on the seat. Now what I do is I, I lap it in one spot for a couple of t tries, turn it about 90 degrees or so, work it in that spot, turn it about 90 degrees, work it in that spot, turn it. That way, no matter which way this valve ends up seating, it should be lapped in. Usually how I know it's pretty close to being done is when it sucks itself shut. This is where the brake clean comes in. When you're lapping, you always wanna use clean rags. Always use a clean rag. You never wanna clean this stuff off directly above anything that you're wanting to use. You don't want to get lapping compound down into your running gear. Cleaned it right up. Boom. A little bit and I sneeze on these. That way they always are come loose. I have to go reefing on them or anything. We have to go reefing on them. That's how this damage right here gets done. I give a little love tap. That one's ready for service. Ah, nope. You don't have to go getting wild and crazy 90% of the time. In gentle persuasion, usually go a long way. Okay, now, I really do not see a reason to need to lap it. We have done this one, we have done that one. I just want to double check to make sure that the engine is uh, gonna come out and not give us any problems when we fire it to run it. 90% of the time when we store these, we actually take the valve bonnets and the valve caps off, leave them sitting with a, a protective coating of, there's some stuff called LPA2. Um, there's a bunch of different things out there, but you spray it down, it's kind of a uh, corrosion protectant. And we'll leave everything sitting here. We'll actually have a rag inside of the valve body and a rag inside of the check valve body to help wick water out so that way it doesn't freeze. Normally, when we put these things in the long-term long storage, that's what we do. We were in such a hurry to get everything locked up and shut down, we just put everything back together. And Okay, I am going to find a place to set y'all up. But what I got to do is I actually have to redo this because I got caught mid, uh, mid doing it. I gotta go through these valves, make sure they're okay and kosher. We already did the valves for the water glasses when we put the water glasses back on and together. But I gotta do all these valves up here, minus the turret valve, because it's a pain to get out. Though at some point in time, I am gonna need to take it out and look at it. And I'm just gonna go through and lap valves all day today. The last thing I need to do is go out here and do the uh, boiler check and the uh, shut off for the uh, check. I'm gonna do that, and then I'm gonna call it a day and go and get some paperwork done. This place right now is being funded completely off of donations and grant funding. If you wanna see the steam engines running, you wanna see the railroad get back to the way it was, there's another link down below that takes you to the Western Forest Industries Museum's donation porthole. We got a lot of big things that have kind of landed in our lap 
and we need funding to be able to do it. So make a donation if you can. Cool. If you can't, sweet. Tell me how I'm doing it wrong. Um, cut that out.